Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the next edition of IBTM Meets, uh, where we catch up with senior industry leaders from across the business events industry all around the globe. Um, the next rendition today, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, a, an industry stalwart, a friend, um, and, and a great partner, Mr. Christoph Tesmar from Barcelona Convention Bureau. Christoph, good morning. Hello and welcome. Hello, my friend Shane. Uh, great to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you today. Um, as I say, you know, you're fully aware of uh, IBTM Meets. Um, so it's basically, you know, just an insight, Christoph, into some of the more informal elements of our, you know, careers to date and, and talking a bit about yourself and, you know, how you got into the industry, etc. Talking about Barcelona and, of course, our common goal um, come what the, uh, the beginning of December when we all hope to meet in Barcelona with all of our friends in the industry for IBTM World 2020. So if it's okay with you and you're sat comfortably, we'll, we'll maybe kick off. Of course, of course. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you and I'm looking forward to talk to you. Great. Great. So it might be nice, I mean, so many people know you, Christoph, of course, but it may be nice just to uh, give a quick introduction as to how you arrived at um, working in the wonderful city of Barcelona and what your, your career path through the business events industry was. So how did it all start? Um, all of you may know that I'm, I'm originally from Germany. Um, I'm here in Barcelona since the 8th of January 1990. I came here only for one year. I was working for a German pharmaceutical company and they, they said it was, would be a good opportunity to to understand or to learn about how an, a foreign affiliate works. And I exactly don't remember how Barcelona came up, but anyway, they sent me to Barcelona for one year. And after a few months, uh, I went uh, in the office of the human resources manager and asked him if there's any opportunity to have a fixed job in Barcelona and to stay there. It was just two years before the Olympics and the city was transforming daily and it was really wonderful and nothing nothing comparable with, with Germany. And uh, they gave me the opportunity and one day I was sitting in the office and a, a guy came from marketing department and he told me, um, we want to do a product launch and our idea is after the wall came down that to go to Berlin and you as a German, you, you can help us. And uh, I said, why not? I can try. I never did it, did it before, but uh, I can try. And that was the beginning of my career in the events industry because it was a really successful event and I liked it so much. And they asked me, oh, can you do a little bit the, the, the organization of the meetings uh, we took with the job you are doing? And said, no problem. And then the company was growing and the events were growing, congresses were growing. So and I became the congress manager for the German company in 1999. I joined uh, Sanofi the Spanish affiliate of Sanofi, um, to create, uh, construct and organize the, the Congress department in, in Spain. And I did this until 2012, because September 2011, I got a call from the tourist office in Barcelona and they asked me if I want to, if I could be interested uh, to join the, the, the tourism office as a director of the Barcelona Convention Bureau. And it was so funny because my first question was, uh, are you sure that you're calling me? Because, <laughs> because I'm a German, I, I'm not here from Catalonia and I'm in the private sector and um, I'm not so much related to politics. And they said, yes, we want to have an interview with you. And after several interviews, they said, you are the candidate. And I joined the convention bureau in, in 2012, in March 2012. And it was really a big change from the private sector to the to the half public in this case. And um, but I love it. I love it. Uh, it took a while, not to understand and to adapt because it's completely different. Uh, this kind of job in comparison with a, a pharmaceutical company. But obviously, after so many years in the Congress management, I I could bring a lot of experience from the other side and. and I learned a lot, and I think the people there learned also a lot from my side. Wow. Now, that is a fantastic journey, public yeah. to private, or private to public, rather, um, and, and into, you know, a cross-border, 
in a, in a truly global role. Um, wow, thank you for sharing that. So maybe just picking up on a couple of things there, Christoph. What, are, what do you think would have been back at that time, and maybe they're still relevant, but the main differences between working uh, for a pharmaceutical company um, uh, a private organization, of course, and, and very much a corporate, um, and then moving into, as you say, a more political maybe, um, and also a, a public-private role in, in, in the Bureau. What would be the main sort of two or three things that were difficult to learn or were very different? No, first of all, completely different. No, what I what I try to do is to to forget my experience from from the private uh, sector in that moment, and to really learn and understand where I am. No, how how this tourism Barcelona is, um, how the people are. No, they they are not used to or they were not used to 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 work on the same way that a, a corporate and in this case a pharmaceutical company does. No, and this is. Uh, obviously something very important know that you really understand where you are and it sure. was a long a long learning process i had to i had to meet uh, many people to understand how they are organized uh, we are half public half private institution with uh, city council and and chamber of commerce so to understand this structure to understand these people and and obviously to meet a lot of people because um, you have to identify the the roles all the roles and you but to understand who you have to contact in in, in the case you need it uh, that was uh, very important then um, to understand and to learn how 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 a convention bureau works because obviously i knew that the convention bureau exists but i didn't really really know uh, uh what is the role and for what uh, they are there no because um, i think uh, the whole time the whole years i was working in as a congress manager i always did it quite openly so i had a lot of contact with hotels agencies etc and sure. and um i could do i could do my job on, on my own without needing uh, a convention for itself so th this was the, the learning process and then uh, obviously to learn about strategies no? uh, how to promote the city and and because i have to tell you there's no more privilege than 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 to represent a city like barcelona in my role and and to be i would if you allow not uh, but to be really uh, really really successful because the the Barcelona obviously was very successful before I joined. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not that that is due to me. See, because the, the convention bureau did a wonderful job to to place Barcelona and to to position Barcelona in the position they are right now. And I could benefit from the position and the, and the knowledge, and the knowledge, but change a, a few things and do some things differently. And and um, well, still still successful. Absolutely. Of course it is. Um, a wonderful, wonderful city that does a phenomenal job in, in the business events industry. And even in the latest ICA yeah. rankings that we've just seen, um, obviously, you know, congratulations again on, on where you've finished as, as the city of Barcelona. But I think as well, the wider Iberia um, region as well, you know, um, some really great results in, in, in the rankings this year. Uh, and of course, you know, that's uh, under the stewardship of, of yourself this year as the Icar Iberian president. So yeah. again, congratulations! It's all working well. Imagine how proud I am. No, first of all, um, um, the Icar ranking for Barcelona, our city. You have to be aware that we are really uh, since two thousand one in a row in the top five. We are wow. not a capital city. No, we are. If you see the top ten. We are not the capital, yeah, and obviously, uh, I, I'm since April last year the head, uh, the, the chair of of of, of the EK Iberian chapter, and we have three cities in the top five. And I'm really so glad and proud about my friends in Lisbon. They achieved the second place for the first time, and absolutely. they did really a great job. And then, obviously, in my role as as EK chair, chapter chair, so I'm I'm so glad. And we fourth and Madrid fifth. So I think the Iberian region is is really relevant for for our industry and and the country as well because the country is this year is fourth place last year third place but we are there always so that that shows that that Spain and then our cities are a great destination for meetings and events. Absolutely, 
Undoubtedly. And of course, we are long-standing partners as well. So, you know, I can 100% stand by that. It's a pleasure to work in such a great city and destination with a, an amazing team. No, Good. Thank true. you, Christoph. Well, uh, maybe change tack slightly now um, and just try and understand a bit more. Well, firstly, I have a burning question. So I've known you a very long time. Um, but I hadn't realised that you actually arrived in Barcelona prior to the 92 Olympics. Now, that must have been something quite special to behold and, and to see. Um, what were the, I, I guess, you know, as a, as a young man arriving in such a wonderful city, what were the main elements of that transformation as they went into 92 and, and came out of it in, in, in the sort of legacy mode that we know has been so successful? Yeah, that's that's... Uh, in, uh, without any doubt that this, this is the best outcome from the Olympics. It was an unbelievable experience uh, to, to live in the city. I, 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 I guess you, 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 you had the same experience in 2012, no, in London. Yes, of course. But especially, uh, especially for Barcelona, it was really, really relevant due to the transformation of the city. There was a, a Barcelona before the Olympics and a completely different one after Olympics. I'm referring to infrastructures and, and I think the Olympics put really Barcelona on the map and, and the responsibles at that time, they did uh, an, an unbelievable job because uh, all the venues, all the structures uh, they, they built up for the Olympics are in use. There's no ruins like we have uh, unfortunately seen in for many other destinations because obviously the investment is, is so huge and they did it really well. So we have still <clears throat> always the, the Olympic feeling there, no? Um, um, and, and it's unbelievable. The mountain, uh, the Olympic mountain, we have the, these wonderful venues, the, the, the village that is now a, a, an area. For, for many citizens of Barcelona living there close to the sea. So it's really, really unbelievable. And and the Olympics itself were so emotional. So that was a really a privilege in my life to live this. And I'm, I'm still have the memories and, and it's, it's, it's a really emotional to talk about it. Yes, a great time, no doubt, to be in a city. And as you see, to see that, that transformation, I think, you know, that's probably, you know, the shining example of, of the legacy model in, in, in yeah. full swing. It really was incredible to witness. And yeah. the success that you've seen in, in the years that followed, I'm sure, are a big part of the foundations that were laid then. It's excellent. Yeah. But Good. I have to say, if you're allowed, I have to say that uh, the, the people in charge at that moment, they did it really great. And they, yes. they, they saw the opportunity. They were really brilliant minds, brilliant thinkers, they, they developed it on a wonderful way and I, I don't have to tell you and, and the whole audience who is listening to us how Barcelona is right now. It's a really yeah. wonderful destination. It truly is. It really, really is. Great. Okay, so I'm sure as, as many, many people in our industry have visited the city, um, you know, they, they will share all of what we said and echo those sentiments. I know for me, having visited probably around about 50 times now, mm -hmm. um, I, every time I go back, I find something new. There's something more to enjoy. Um, a truly phenomenal city. Um, but if someone was visiting for the first time, Christoph, and, and there was one thing that you would like them as a first time visitor to Barcelona to do, um, what, what would that be? Uh, it depends on what what you like. No, uh, obviously uh, the first time if you've never been to Barcelona, uh, uh, there are some key elements. So Sagrada Familia is one of the icons in the world. Uh, this is, I think, it's a must. All the Gaudi buildings, no, to have a walk around Paseo de Gracia, see all these places, and also the, the the Gothic quarter. I would say the cultural offer is 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 so huge that uh, you should try to pick up the most important ones and, and, and walk, walk, walk through all the city and obviously don't forget the sea, close to the sea that, that, that we are so privileged to have a sea, mountain, we have everything and really yes. not missing nothing and, and, and if you have a little bit more of time, obviously they come now, Football Club Barcelona, that's also an experience that, that it's a must. It Even if you, don't, uh, so, uh, if you don't are a soccer fan, but to see the, the stadium and the museum and all what they have there to show, the history of, of this club is, is, I think, also a key point. But, but uh, obviously, Sagrada Familia and all these Gaudi buildings should be the first things to visit. Yes, of course. No, so many wonderful things to see and do. That's very true. Um, okay, and, and as you know, Christoph, we're both fans of 
lovely food and good wine. So maybe a question around, you know, if you had to choose, I know your wine of preference is a red wine. Um, what, what would be your favorite wine, Christoph? I have to tell you now that the summer is coming, I'm also uh, trying, uh, well, trying not, I'm also having uh, quite a lot of white wine because it's it's oh, better. Wow. Not so maybe we've food. changed. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not changing. Obviously, my red <laughs> wine. And there is uh, uh, my absolute favorite. It's uh, from, from a Rioja region. It's called R Roda, R-O-D-A. They have so four or five wines. It's starting with Sela, Roda, Roda One, and Thusion. I would. It's really difficult to say this is the the best one, but all these wines from Roda this is absolutely my favorite. And with white wine, I'm discovering a lot of great Almarinos from Galicia. It's, okay. Uh, but I have to tell you, you know, we are here in Catalonia, and Catalonia is a very rich wine region, and there are so many, many great wines as well. Uh, but it's not necessary to mention them. Uh, this can be done with me on private, but uh, definitely Roda is my, my favorite. Great. And do you have a, a favorite restaurant in Barcelona? There are some of them. Uh, uh, I'm uh, absolutely... Uh, yeah, uh, Japanese Japanese food lover. So we have, I would say, one of the best Japanese restaurants is called Sushi Ninety Nine. But uh, I'm, I guess that the audience want really more, more to know uh, uh, some some more typical you know, fish or, or, or meats, some Mediterranean restaurants that we have a wonderful one. And on the top is a restaurant called Roch Ruby, a very Catalan name, Roch Ruby. Great fish, great meat, the Mediterranean cuisine, wonderful. It's a high-level restaurant. But we, the, the good thing is that we have so many, many hundreds and hundreds of restaurants, tapas. Cañota is a very good tapas place. I, I love it. And um, I think the last time uh, we were together here in Barcelona, it was the last time we, we you last traveled, no? It really uh, was, yes. Uh, we went to a to a place called Bilbao, so in the corner in Gracia, and you we remember did. the food? It I was remember. Like, was very, like, very good. That was food, a so the, the offer is, is outstanding, and, and I could recommend hundreds, so it's, but I, I told you the, 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 my tops. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing. We did indeed share that, that lovely, uh, um, that lunch. Uh, it was only the end of February. Can you believe that? It yeah. seems like it was so long ago. Yeah. Um, but we will get back to that point, of course. Um, and I can't wait to come and uh, to see you all again. And, and, Me and too. Some of that. And we'll, Me too. we'll get there soon. We will meet again, as everyone is saying. Yeah, no, for Great. sure, for sure. This is our leitmotiv uh, in our industry. And we have to work really hard on, on getting back and meet again. Yeah, absolutely. And that brings us quite nicely around to um, talk maybe a bit more about business, Christoph. So, you know, how are things going in, in, in Barcelona? Of course, you know, we're all globally seeing so many challenges. We probably don't need to talk about those today. Um, but it's, um, you know, it, it's all about looking forward. And we, of course, are 100 percent looking forward to IBTM World in December. Um, I think, you know, a lot of our industry are looking forward to connecting. Um, and, and you and I have spoken a lot um, privately about that possibility, of course. But, you know, how are things uh, progressing and, and, you know, how do things look and, and, and feel now in the city and, and what's the forward vision? OK, let's start with uh, things in the, in the city. We are uh, getting much better now. The, the, the last days, the figures are, are really going down. There is still obviously a lot of bad news because we don't have to forget that each people, each person who, who who dies is a very bad news. But uh, the, sure. in comparison with March and April, so now things are getting better. But we have to really be careful. So we're going slowly, uh, step by step, uh, in order not to to have a re a reinfections or, or that we are go going back to the situation we had a few weeks ago. So this on this uh, kind of things, the situation is getting better. Obviously, regarding our industry, we were the, the kickoff no, of all these uh, cancellations and what happened to us with the Mobile World Congress, what was a shock in that moment. But obviously, we saw uh, a few weeks later that it was the right decision. Also, um, mm -hmm. um, 
And I don't have to tell you, everyone knows it happened all over so that all the business, what we had uh, confirmed here is, is or postponed or, or canceled. And we have, we are now looking into, into autumn, September, October, if we are able to maintain something or not, but it's, it's difficult to say right now, but obviously we're, we're working on it. And, and obviously this, the, the big, big goal for me, for the city, and I think for all our industry is the IBTM in, in, in 1st of December, which we should be able to deliver. I don't know exactly how, but uh, only the, the, the opportunity to be there, to have uh, uh, the show taking place, we will see how, how we will develop it, or how you will develop it. But, but to do something that people can, that we can meet again, as we said a few minutes ago, would be great. So and after the kickoff of the cancellation, maybe this is the, the start, the kickoff of, of the comeback of the, our industry. Absolutely. Well, that's a good way to frame it, of course. And we are adamant and very positive and confident that, that IBTM World will go ahead. Um, we're, we're doing all of that planning. Naturally, there are many, many things to consider. Um, but it's great to see that the city is moving forward and that um, everything is working, you know, towards getting everybody back up and running and, and working on how things may be, uh, you know, may be possible. Um, so we are, uh, you know, as I say, we're working very closely with all of you and, you know, we're very, very confident that we'll be able to make an event um, happen. I think the big unknown, as you say, is we're not quite sure how it will look. Um, in terms of what we need to do with regards to regulation. But, you know, we're very confident being in the city of Barcelona, very forward thinking destination that's emerging now, very well connected. You know, all of the reasons that we originally founded our partnership, you know, are, are still strong and will help us through to, to deliver that global gathering for the industry come what December. And, and, you know, I think there are many, many people that cannot wait for that point. Yeah, I'm obviously as as we all are now in a lot of meetings, and I'm, I'm I'm I have the the privilege that I'm in a lot of international meetings with many other colleagues uh, from Europe and and other parts of the world, and everyone is saying the same. This is like we we want to go to Barcelona in December, so and we are really looking forward to it. So we should really try. We have to see how how things go and. Uh, in the next coming weeks and and what the decisions are from the different governments but um there are some really positive uh positive flights i would say so i see that uh flight carriers are announcing that yes. they will start mid-june end of june flight so and, and this is the beginning only so i guess that we, if we start in june so for december we will have uh, uh, a lot of uh, flights. I know that that the venue FIDA is is working really hard on establishing all the protocols and 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 make possible that the events can come back. Uh, I think in September. So what I've I heard, we cannot confirm right now, but they will announce for sure. And obviously, we are we are we are having meetings mo nearly every week, Shane. So you know perfectly. So we are talking about uh, about uh, 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 what we will do and we should really take the time we need to 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 decide whatever we will do and i think there's still we are now mid of may uh, so we have still six months ahead no? yes we do we are um uh you know as i say we're in a very very good position um time wise uh, we've got a lot of um opportunity between now and then for things to ease and I think globally things, you know, some countries obviously in different places to others. Um, but I think, um, you know, as, a, as an industry and, and within Europe, things are beginning to move and, and, and really in the right direction. So yeah. we feel very comfortable and confident that, that we can do that. And as, as we've said, safety and security will always remain the priority for anything we do. Um, but we're certainly heading in the right direction. And that's really, really great to hear. So thank you for sharing that. No course with great pleasure you cannot believe how how this would be one of the best moments i think you know my whole career my whole career you know if we really can have the, the ibtm uh, because this experience is also one of if not the worst one of the worst experiences in my career as well so for i think for all of us so this is uh, that would really shine a light no <laughs> in december in barcelona when ibtm takes place 
Absolutely. Well, we're all gunning for that 100%. And as I say, I think we have no doubt that that will, will take place and that will all be really, really good. So thanks for sharing that update. That's really good to hear. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that really pretty much probably concludes where we where we are today. So, you know, thank you again for sharing your journey, um, you know, sharing a bit of the history around Barcelona. Um, I think you know, all of that around the, the Olympic legacy and, you know, your role within continuing that great vision that that the the, the predecessors had is is brilliant um you know we're certainly amazed by the support we get by barcelona it's a great partnership we enjoy and and like you we are very very excited for december to bring everyone back together again so thank you very much for joining us today christoph it's been an absolute pleasure to have you um Come and in. we look forward to to catching up properly in person um, before IBTM, but face to face very, very soon. And then, of uh, course, we'll definitely see everyone in December. I hope so. Um, uh, it's a pleasure being here with you. Thank you to giving me the, the opportunity. And and you are really also a wonderful partner for, for Barcelona. And apart from, from the relationship we have business wise, um, we consider you friends more than, than partners. And, 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 and that makes our life really, really much easier because uh, we just renewed the contract together and it was so easy that 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 that, that shows now how, how our partnership is so and it's really a privilege and 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 you know here i am for whatever you and your colleagues and your team may need that's very kind of you thank you so much christoph um we'd love to as i say lovely to have you thank you for your wonderfully kind words and you know good luck with the coming weeks we're, we're seeing that light at the end of the tunnel and and we'll We'll stay in touch and I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you, Shane. Hope so. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.